viewers. You're not going to believe where tonight's edition of In Pit Lane is coming from. Ordos. Set on the fringe of the Gobi Desert in Inner Mongolia, Ordos City is an architectural tour de force. A showcase international city of tomorrow designed to house over 20 million inhabitants. Current population? Probably about the same as Geelong. It's Saturday night in Ordos and the streets are almost empty. There are no shops, no bars, Nothing. Well, that's not quite true. On the walls of the gigantic and mostly empty law library is a massive sound and light show that makes Pink Floyd's The Wall look like a rock and roll I stead for entry from your local suburban high school. This specially commissioned blend of music and stunning visuals charts the history of the region from its days as the birthplace of Genghis Khan through to its vision of Ordos as an international hub of high-tech engineering and design. And it screens all night and all watched by less than a dozen people. Then there's the park. Looking like some sort of crazy rave party, the park's lit up with more strobes, lasers and coloured lights than a Muse concert. The colour changing lake comes complete with permanent fog machines and the centrepiece is this enormous statue, which we think is Gina Reinhardt preparing to sacrifice a small goat. But we're not totally sure. And then, just when you think it can't become any more surreal, a massive fireworks display that goes on for the best part of 30 minutes and rivals anything seen on Sydney Harbour on New Year's Eve. And this happens every single night of the year. Why? Because they can. As an international city of tomorrow, it almost goes without saying that Ordos has a major international racetrack. I mean, what sort of modern international city doesn't? Oh, yeah, OK, point taken. Situated about 45 minutes from the heart of Ordos City is the Ordos International Circuit. A full FIA Level 2 accredited international track Ordos International is, like everything else in Ordos, a work in progress. But even now it rivals many of the best tracks in the world for its facilities and it's miles ahead of anything we have here in Australia. Built in 2010, the 3.7 km circuit has 18 corners and the design has been influenced by the running horses that are so much a part of the area's history. Already the track has hosted rounds of the A1 Grand Prix, the FIA GT1 World Championship and in 2013 it will play host to a round of the Asian Le Mans series. The track has a massive permanent grandstand that holds over 20,000 people. But how will they fill it? Where will these people come from? And why is China and the Asian region in general building just so many of these impressive new racetracks when the sport here is still so very small. Daniel Chan is one of the region's top journalists. The Formula One commentator for ESPN Star Sports right across Asia, Daniel thinks he knows why. Almost every Asian country is trying to do that bit to be on the international map. So I think Asian is definitely on the rise in motorsports, especially backed up by the economy. 
Is Formula One the driving force behind all of this? Is, is Formula One what's going to be required to get the, the spark of interest from the general community? To be frank, I don't really think so. I think um, as the economy grows in Asia and um, the, uh, the car industry has a heads up and, and, and growing and starts to earn profits or money, and things will get going. Just like here in China, um, we, have our own th we have our own manufacturers and we have our own stuff. And um, the lower tier series are getting really uh, great attention in the public. So I think things are getting really head start in, in China. Um, they are having great circuits, they are having great drivers and um, I was previously interviewed by other media and I would say um, the third generation of the rich would really become the um, top tier or the top cream of international drivers, race drivers, I mean. Um, you see most of the drivers nowadays, for example, like in now in Audi uh, R8 LMS Cup, they are probably from the second generation of the rich family. But by then, when we get to the third uh, generation, those kids will be racing when they are five or when they are six and when they are racing um, and growing, when they are racing karting that would be the uh, cream of Chinese motorsports. What about the local manufacturers and their involvement? I mean, we've seen here today the, uh, the Chinese Touring Car Championship. We know in Australia from V8 supercars, it's the battle between Ford versus Holden, something that the average person understands. Is that important in lo developing local motorsport? I think that's the, that's the key. That's the key to develop uh, local motorsports. Because th these uh, local distributors or dis local manufacturers, they, they harvest the talents from very local towns or cities. And people have to take things step by step. You just can't put in Formula One and then everybody suddenly becomes a Formula One race driver. That's probably, that's quite impossible, even if you have the money. You don't do that. You don't do that. And even if you get a seat in Formula One, you don't do well. And if you don't do well, then that's a negative circle. That's a negative spiraling down circle. So I think um, local championships such as uh, this one, Audi R8 LMS Cup, and other series such as um, what you just mentioned, the CTCC, that's the key step for Chinese motorsports to take flight.